Vitonians, on a crochet. This is on a mayor, Yvonne Akisoya. I can't talk to Nat today because last night, immediately after His Excellency the President been delivered in speech to the nation, the Minister of Information, members of the Strategic Communication Unit, and the Presidential Press Secretary that hold the panel discussion. I've been finding them very deeply disturbing, very, very troubling, for let like once again, on that national platform, then name me and accuse me falsely of inciting the protest. I want to say this practice, because not to the first time they don't do them, of continuously falsely accusing me on national platforms, not a very, very wrong and troubling action. I want to say I roundly condemn the violence we lead to the protest and for say I not get no hands in incitement or the organization of the protest. For lay official government spokespeople, then they continuously call me name in this regard very wrong. It don't already lead to attacks on me on social media and attempted attacks on property of Freetown City Council. But this is not all about me. Last week, or rather this week earlier, because the week just did done, we don't see so much suffering. People then lost their life. People then day in hospital. People then an increasing number, in fact, of people, they be detained. And I understand, say, people, they then detainees them, not to get access to legal representation. And in our Donde, we also see markets woman them and man them where overnight lost in source of livelihood where their markets table them be destroyed. The suffering this week, Don Boku, and my hearts go out to all man where they suffer and with the souls of the one that we lost their life rest in peace. With times and challenging, it's important for let we come together and foster a spirit of unity, for bring people then come together, not to for pull them apart. As the mayor of the city, I stand against violence and I stand for peace and I appeal to everybody for continue for listen words of peace and abstain from violence. The challenges that we day, not challenges way for be addressed but that no mean to say it will lead to violence. I stand for peace, I stand for Freetonians, and on this final note, I want to say to we all, I committed as a Sierra Leonean for stand for peace and justice in this nation, and also as a mayor for continue for serve the people of this city with all my heart and with diligence. Una thank you. My fellow Australians, far and wide, I reached out to you all today with a heavy heart for the sad events on Wednesday, 10th August 2022, and the very unfortunate loss of valuable lives. My condolences to the bereaved families. You've lost loved ones, and may their gentle souls, through the masses of God, rest in perfect peace, and may light perpetual shine upon them. Fellow Australians, I would like to re-echo and join the soothing, hope-bringing, and reassuring messages of those patriotic citizens and development partners that are calling and recalling for national peace and unity, that are reminding us of the tremendous benefits to all of a tolerant and inclusive society, and of the need to build the Israelium where no one will be unjustly judged, castigated, victimized, marginalized, molested, and left to walk alone as if they have no hope in their hands. More often than not, civil protests, albeit in a law-abiding and non-violent manner, have the significance of letting institutional and national leaders know the concerns of the government. They must be seen to represent 
a wake up call for both parties to be self introspective. It cannot be denied that in many countries, including Sierra Leone, the many forms of social, economic, and political hardship and marginalization are tearing us apart and many a time leading to civil unrest and instability. It therefore requires a great sense of maturity, understanding, even handedness and mutual respect to find and apply the appropriate remedial solutions. I do pray that in Sierra Leone we'll all bear in mind that you are one people, one nation, under one God. We are all Sierra Leoneans, and let us make peace to prevail in order for us to build a better nation. Neither violence, nor self-denial, nor reprisals, nor heavy-handedness or state capture of public institutions can solve the ongoing difficult situation in Israel. What we need at this moment in time is godly love and divine intervention for unity and good neighborliness to reign once again. Dialogue. Tolerance, communication, and sincerity can work wonders. Let us make that difference in the lives of our people. Let us bring back the spirit and values of our hardworking nation builders to life. And let us don't allow hate, identity politics, selfish ends, and wrong choices to consume our wonderful country. Leaders must talk to their people, and so must they also encourage their people to talk to them. Even more importantly, leaders must talk to each other. Mutual trust and cross-fertilization of positive transformative ideas must dictate our thinking and interpersonal relationships. Together, we can make it happen. God bless Sierra Leone. Colleague honorable members, members of the fourth estate, I will read the press statement, as I said, as contained. The statement is dated Wednesday, 17th August, 2022. On the 10th of August, 2022, our country suffered yet another phase of shocking violence emanating from a clash between protesters and security forces. These disturbances resulted in the loss of the lives of several civilians and security personnel of the Sierra Leone police. Unfortunately, the painful event of August 10th continued for several days further claiming the lives of citizens in harrowing circumstances, as in the cases of Hassan Dumbuya, commonly called Evangelist Samson, and some others. I continue to express my profound condolences to the families who lost loved ones. May their souls rest in perfect peace. As the nation grieves, let me state that I strongly condemn violence of any form and believe that there are much more progressive and constructive approaches to communicate our concerns, including peaceful protests. I will also reiterate that in any democratic dispensation, citizens have the right to use protests to demonstrate their concerns, as long as those protests are peaceful and are within the remit of the law. Again, I note that citizens, including Mohamed Kamara, popularly known as Merke of the All People's Congress, were arrested even before the 10th of August demonstrations and are still in detention. The event leading to and which unfolded on 10th of August 2022 provided a clear indication that there has been an erosion in the gains made in strengthening reconciliation, 
social cohesion, and peace building in post-war Sierra Leone. These events further point to the fact that we have not succeeded in using constructive means of dialoguing to maintain peace, stability, social cohesion, and security in our beloved country, Sierra Leone. More than ever before, there is a need for us to reverse this trend by reflecting on where we have gone wrong and what we can do to ensure that the gains made over the years to consolidate peace are not lost. Violence can only undermine stability and development. I therefore call on all Sierra Leoneans to remain calm and law-abiding. And I call on the government to immediately take steps to ameliorate the situation by ensuring the following. One, that the number of people killed during and after the incident is made public with their corpses handed over to their families for dignified burial rights. Two, that a record of all those incarcerated is provided to the public and their families granted access to them. The government should ensure that their rights are protected through speedy and fair access to a court of law. They should also be provided with legal representation where they cannot afford one. Three, in line with the above, I endorse the call for an independent committee to speedily and conclusively investigate the August 10 demonstrations and its aftermath. However, it must be ensured that the composition and conduct of the committee is credible and non-partisan with the sole aim of providing truthful findings and profile recommendations that will, amongst other things, help to provide redress for the families of victims. Four, let me take this opportunity also to call on the Interreligious Council and other civil society organizations, our Council of Paramount Chiefs, and community leaders to mobilize and take the right steps in engaging all relevant stakeholders with the aim of helping to promote reconciliation, healing, and social cohesion in our beloved country. I cannot overemphasize the role of the civil society in the consolidation of democratic good governance in Sierra Leone as we draw closer to the 2023 elections. Five, I also call on the international community to continue providing the required political support and inspire the much needed political will to overcome the challenges that our nation is currently contending with. In conclusion, let us be reminded that what unites us is mightier than what divides all. May God grant us the peace and serenity that we deserve and seek to achieve in Sierra Leone. I thank you.